Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta and I'm a cardiologist in York and today I have discovered a very interesting bit of information and I was very keen to share it with all of you uh, because I think it may help you understand how anxiety could cause ectopic beats. Okay, so this video is entitled Anxiety and Ectopics, the Missing Link. All right, um, now many of you who watch my videos will have suffered from ectopic heartbeats. Uh, these are also called PVCs or PACs or extra systoles. And as a consequence of me putting my videos out, I've had the opportunity and the fortune to personally speak to many of you. Uh, who suffer from these and I've begun to realize how awful they can make people feel um, and the big problem is that there's very little information out there most of the times the poor patient goes to the doctor and doctor says oh it's benign forget about it uh, or it's your anxiety you know and the poor patient is left saying okay well I know they're not dangerous but they still really really affect my quality of life they make me feel miserable I can't do anything and there's really no help or support for that. So um, through talking to many of you, I thought, oh, I'm going to try and do as much as I can to try and get to the bottom of this, okay? And now I have spoken to tons of people with ectopics, mainly through the videos, right? And um, what I've, uh, well, I've spoken to people who are very old. I've spoken to people who are very young. I've spoken to people who have lots of comorbidities. I've spoken to people who are who are completely otherwise healthy. I've spoken to um, people who are sedentary, and I've also spoken to people who are professional athletes. All right. And when I'm speaking to them in my own mind, I'm always thinking: Is there a common theme amongst all these people? Um, is there something that I can identify in my own mind which links all these people together? And if I can do that, then maybe I will know why these people are getting their ectopics. And if I know why they're getting their ectopics, maybe there's a solution. All right. Um, <clears throat> so the one thing that I've found universally present in pretty well much everyone I've spoken to with ectopic beads is that they all have some uh, propensity or um, uh, frank anxiety. So they, they, they either have this tendency towards anxiety or they actually really just say that, you know, I am a very anxious person or I suffer from very bad anxiety. This is by far the commonest thing I've found talking to virtually everyone with ectopic beats. And nowadays, if someone rings me and says, look, I want to speak to you about my topics, which are really bothering me, I say, uh, first thing I want to ask you is just suffer from anxiety because I in my mind know that the chances are that they will suffer from a degree of anxiety. So I've done some research about anxiety and I've put a, a lot of videos out on this subject uh, but there was something that was missing so let me tell you what I do what I did know okay what I know is that people who have anxiety seem to be more hyper aroused with regards to their heart rhythm. So they will feel anything that's going on in their heart a lot more than normal people. We know normal people also get ectopics, but they don't feel them. But anxious people, because they're more hyper aroused, will feel them more. Now, there was another interesting video I did where we also discovered through a research paper that people who are put in a more anxious situation will get more ectopics, i.e. you can get a certain number of ectopics, but if you then are put in a stressful or anxious situation, you get more. There's a video about this out, um, on YouTube that I've put out. It's really, really interesting, and I would recommend that if you haven't listened to it, it's worth listening to. Then I found three very interesting things about if someone says to me, well, what works for ectopic beats? I normally say there's three things that work. Number one, reassurance. Reassurance seems to work really well. Number two, magnesium seems to work really well. And number three, uh, breathing exercises. And you may have seen a video I put out uh, several months about uh, several months ago about a simple breathing exercise uh, which can help curb ectopics when they're happening. And subsequently, I got a lot of feedback from people saying they work. The breathing exercises work. The breathing exercise basically consists of slowing your breathing down uh, and taking deeper, slower breaths. Okay, If you get a chance, please watch the video. It's, it's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> so I know that uh, people who have anxiety have more ectopics. I also know that breathing exercises seem to work and magnesium seems to work. One interesting thing was that a lot of people came to me and said, 
well, my magnesium levels are normal, okay? And I said to them, well, yes, but blood magnesium, i.e. the magnesium that's measured on a blood test, correlates very poorly with ionized magnesium levels, which are free magnesium, because magnesium can be bound to protein and can be free. And it's the free magnesium, which is the interesting magnesium, it's the free magnesium concentration, which impacts on physiological function and things like ectopics, okay? So um, I said, well, don't worry about the blood levels. It's the free magnesium levels that are important. So then some people went and got their free magnesium levels uh, done, and they came back and they said, well, my free magnesium levels are normal, so it's not a magnesium problem. And I said to them, well, try the magnesium anyway. And a ton of them came back and said, actually, the magnesium makes me feel better. I feel better. My topics are a lot less frequent which was, again, something that really surprised me, that if the free magnesium levels are normal, then how come these people are benefiting from the magnesium? Okay, uh, and so although I knew that magnesium and uh, anxiety and ectopics are sort of, you know, they're all sort of related in some way, I just didn't know exactly what the mechanism was between anxiety, magnesium, and ectopic beats. But today I think I have discovered what could be the missing link. And so I wanted to share it with you. I'm really excited about this, as you can see, because I think a lot of people will find this interesting and I think they may benefit from this. Okay, today I found this really interesting paper by a guy called Hafen, H-A-F-E-N, et al. Uh, and this was published in the Clinical Science Journal in 1996. Okay, and what these guys did was they took eight healthy men and they measured their ionized magnesium levels, okay? They measured their total magnesium levels as well. So they measured the total magnesium, which is just a simple blood test, which I say is not very useful. And then they also measured the ionized level, which is the interesting level, all right? And what they did was they got these guys to hyperventilate, okay? So a normal breathing uh, rates are around about 15, 16 per minute. These guys were made to hyperventilate at 20 respiratory um, um, 20 breaths 20 breaths per minute okay so they they uh, did this for about 30 minutes all right so these guys eight healthy volunteers they have their magnesium levels checked at rest normal breathing then they're made to hyperventilate at 20 breaths per minute for 30 minutes and then they have their measurements done again uh, now, uh, so this is very interesting, okay? So what were the findings? The first thing is that when you hyperventilate, the average heart rate goes up. So the average heart rate goes up by about 13 beats per minute, okay? But in some people, it went up by 41 beats per minute. So the heart rate goes up. So it's not surprising that people find that the heart's racing, all right? Or they're getting palpitations because the heart's going up. The second thing was that all of them, develop tingling in their hands, tingling and numbness in their hands. So they get this tingling sensation in their hands. And four of them actually develop tingling and numbness in their feet. So half of them develop tingling and numbness in their feet, but all of them develop tingling in their hands. And five of them actually, during the hyperventilation, actually developed spasm of their hands. Okay, they started, their hands started going into spasm. Two of them started complaining of lightheadedness. Okay, and all these are features of something called respiratory alkalosis because when you're hyperventilating, you're getting rid of carbon dioxide very quickly. And so you do, carbon dioxide is responsible for acid within our bodies. If you get rid of lots of carbon dioxide, you become alkalotic, so your pH goes up. But what was really interesting was your magnesium, what happened to the magnesium levels? The total magnesium level remained the same. It didn't change. But the free magnesium level, the interesting magnesium, the ionized magnesium, that fell significantly, okay? And it remained low for 30 minutes after the hyperventilation. And so this may be the reason why people who have anxiety get more ectopics. This may be the reason why people who say, when my anxiety is really bad, I get a lot more ectopic. It may well all be due to hyperventilation. And this is why the things that I've told you about, breathing exercises 
and magnesium work so well because when you breathe when you slow your breathing you are reducing the effects of and that alkalotic effect in the body because of a loss of carbon dioxide and you're slowing your breathing down so you're normalizing the pH um, and the second thing of course is that if you take magnesium then you're less likely to become magnesium deficient temporarily when you're hyperventilating okay and this is why people who say well my ionized magnesium is okay uh, still benefit from magnesium because actually they may be okay when you have your blood test done when you have your ionized magnesium level checked but if you hyperventilate for whatever reason and many of us can do that without realizing it when you hyperventilate your mag ionized magnesium level could actually get much lower without impacting on the magnesium a total magnesium which is measured from a simple blood test so the main messages from this are, number one, um, I think you should try, if you're getting ectopics, please, please, please pay attention to your breathing. Uh, a lot of us hyperventilate when we're in stressful situations and you just need to try and control your breathing. And if you did, you will get less ectopics. I guarantee it. Number two, take some magnesium. Don't worry about the blood test. Try the magnesium, okay? Now, obviously, look, you know, I don't know all of you, so I would always recommend you go and speak to your doctor. Um, but if you don't have major kidney problems, if you don't have any uh, other huge problems, then I can't see any major problem with taking magnesium. You could take it um, orally with, uh, with sort of increasing your diet, or even better still, you could take a magnesium supplement for a few days to see what effect that has, all right? Now, a lot of people uh, have written to me and say, well, what magnesium supplement should I take? There's so many, okay? Now, I will... I have put a link on my website for the magnesium I recommend. Um, I don't really profit from it. But it's not it's not something I sell. Yes, if you click on the link on my website, then it goes to Amazon and I get a small um, uh, affiliate fee for it. But you know you can take any magnesium you want. But if you ask me which one I recommend, if you head over to www.yorkcardiology.co. Dot UK and then at the top there's a magnesium link if you click on that uh, it'll take you to the one I recommend I've recommended it in a lot of people I would say 90% of patients have come back and said they felt better um, and there is a study I've put on magnesium and ectopics in one of my other videos and you'll find that useful because that's what the study shows as well about 90% of patients symptomatically feel better when they take magnesium Okay, uh, so I hope you found this interesting. I'm really excited, as you can tell. I really hope it'll help you. Um, if you come and join me on my Facebook page, I will put up the paper for you guys to read. If you found this interesting, please, please, please consider subscribing uh, to my channel. And please consider telling other people who might find it interesting about it. Um, I'm going to put a video out every Wednesday and Saturday. It's going to be tough because I have a very busy job, a busy day job, but I'm going to try because I enjoy this a lot more than my day job. Anyway, um, please do consider visiting my website, www.yourcardiology.co.uk. Uh, please come to my Facebook page. My Facebook page is, um, I don't know what it is, but you can type in yourcardiology at gmail.com in your search, Facebook search, and you'll find it. That's who I am. Um, yourcardiology at gmail.com is also my email address so if you needed to contact me you can do so i'm also on twitter your cardiology again now um you know you guys are like a family to me right so i want to work really hard i want to try and help as much as i can it's the most uh, it's the most fun part the most uh, the best part of my day because i get so much appreciation and that makes me feel really good all right so i'm sorry so um so, um, you know, I, I'm loving this. And whilst so many of you write and say, thank you for doing this, actually, thank you. Thank you for, um, thank you for um, listening to me. Thank you for thinking that I have something worthwhile to say. Uh, you know, doctors wouldn't exist without patients. And therefore, it is for our patients that, um, it is to our patients that we owe everything. Our mere profession, we owe to our patients. So, um I just wanted you to know how appreciative I am. If you have any ideas as to how I can improve my channel, please let me know. If you have any any way I can get my more more uh, views, more subscribers, 
I'm very open because I have not got a clue and, and um, you know, I'm just sort of trying it whatever I can, but uh, I, I'm really enjoying this. Thank you so much. All the best. Take care. Bye.